What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTFB Inventions. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were hooking up our industrial grinder over here. We made the multi-block structure, and we got the industrial grinder made, which took literally forever, but we got it done. And then we started getting some power going. So we hooked up the water wheels. We brought some RF power down underneath here, ran it over along the bottom of this walkway. Let's go and break out some blocks here. I'll show you this. Yeah, so we had our leadstone flux duct coming over here, and we are trying to convert the power <laughs> using immersive engineering LV wire connectors, and this doesn't work. We also made a CESU, which is not gaining power. Yes, uh, the last few times I've used immersive engineering and has been able to convert RF to EU, it is disabled in this mod pack, which caught me by surprise. So what we need to do is actually hook up a power converter. Power converter mods is in this mod pack, so yeah, that's what we need to do. So I've made myself an e -V, uh, EUMV consumer. <laughs> um, this is actually needs to be a producer, so we can produce EU power. I made myself an energy bridge. We got both of those made, but we need to get ourselves an RF consumer. And this is where we're at right now. Yeah, that kind of confused me for a second. I was thinking that was supposed to be an RF consumer, but we never made that. Yeah, I, I made the R, or I'm sorry, the EUMV consumer which can be converted back and forth just by putting in your crafting grid like so. Cool, so we got these two made, so we're looking for the RF consumer. This item right here. So in order to make this, we could do the uh, yeah the thermal expansion route, or we can do the Ender IO route. I thought we said that we were gonna do the Ender IO, which is gonna require us to make some different additional machines, some different machines. Uh, we could use the induction smelter to make the electrical steel, or we could use an alloy smelter. We might as well just go ahead and build some of these um, Ender I.O. machines, I think. So let's get started. We need an alloy smelter. I think that might be the only one in particular we need at the moment. So an alloy smelter is crafted with three furnaces, four iron, uh, I guess seven more iron for the cauldron, and then a machine chassis, which is four more iron, some iron bars, and a basic capacitor. This is pretty... Simple stuff. So we just need some gold nuggets, redstone, and copper. I think we should have everything. I just got done doing a lot of mining. Uh, so we're going to need gold nuggets. That, uh, I can't remember anymore. My my memory fails me too, redstone. All right, so we should be able to get that basic cap made. There we go. All right, so we got that made. So now we need four iron and I guess, a little, well, we should probably take all the iron with us because we're going to need the cauldron. And we are going to need some iron bars. Let's go make that. Okay, so we should have just about everything done here. And we will make the machine chassis, followed by the furnace. Oh, yeah, we need some cobblestone to make those furnaces, the vanilla ones. Let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three. That should be all we need to do. Cool. All right, so we should be able to make this now. Done. Alloy smelter. Get. All right, so now that we have that, we need this to make the... I can't remember. <laughs> uh, we need that to make, I guess, the electrical steel for one. I think there was also something else. Yeah, we have to make the double layer capacitor. So a lot more of these basic capacitors, these don't have exchange value. So we have to make every one of those by hand. Energetic alloy does not have exchange either. So we have to make this stuff. So that's redstone gold and glowstone dust. We should be able to do this. Let's go ahead and cook up. I don't know. Uh, 16 sounds like a reasonable amount. And then 16 gold. There we go. All right, so we should have everything together. Now we just need to power this with a little bit of RF. Uh, we can do that simply by coming over here to our water wheels. Yeah, we don't have... Well, I guess we could do it down here. This might be a little bit safer. We can kind of stick this machine right here. It'll gain power. Yep. And then we can go ahead and put that, that, and that in there. And that should start smelting it into the energetic alloy. Cool. All right, so we also are going to need to make ourselves... Didn't we have to make something else for this? Pretty sure, yeah, the electrical steel. All right, so electrical steel, we need coal dust, silicon, and iron. And the coal dust, I think, yeah, we can exchange that. So I can go ahead and uh, put one in the macerator, and I should be able to get, yeah, the uh, IC2 version has that. How do we get silicon in this pack? We can pulverize, sag mill, pulverize, or sag mill. That's, those are our only two options. Let's go ahead and make the sag mill. Going to try and avoid doing the thermal expansion machines for as long as possible in this playthrough, I think is what we're going to do for no particular reason other than those are always the machines I jump to first. 
All right, well, I tell you what, it's becoming nighttime. We're going to be doing a little bit more crafting. Uh, it's pretty much all the same stuff for these different recipes. Let me go and make that sag mill. I'll wait for the energetic alloy to finish. We'll make some electrical steel. Yep, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, a lot of that processing has been done, and a lot of the crafting has been done as well, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and make ourselves that RF consumer together. Um, we need to make this capacitor banks already have the double layer circuits. Oh, I might not. Oh no, I do have the block redstone. Yeah, we should have everything right now to do this. Cool. All right. So we got the capacitor bank made. Uh, now we just need four gold on us. There we go. And it won't, I was going to say done, but it doesn't shift click in. There we go. RF consumer get cool. So now we can do no, no. Yeah, we want the consumer. We're going to consume RF. We're going to use the bridge to convert it into something else, and we're going to output, uh, or we're going to produce MVEU. Okay, I think we should be all set, except I need some kind of a wire that transfers EU. Let's see, what do we got around here? I guess we can just use a copper cable. I should probably grab a couple of these copper cables. Actually, wasn't there one more right here? Yeah, there was. All right, let's grab like three copper cables. Uh, now, normally this stuff does 128, and I think this does, I don't know, that's the same thing, 128. I was thinking that the copper cable was doing like 32 or something like that, but I do believe um, the power is turned off in this pack, like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you can pump unlimited power through the copper cable, so I was going to try and say, but I failed at it. Uh, so anyway, we need to do an RF consumer. Stick one, I think. Let's see, where do we want to do this? This is kind of hard to see. So we got one, two, three spaces. Okay, so we'll just do this into an energy bridge right here. And then we'll output into the EU producer. And we should be able to see everything going on. Yeah, and this stores a little bit of internal power. So that's pretty cool. We can see that it's inputting 200 RF per tick from the west. We can actually increase this a little bit if we attach another thing uh right like that i do believe but now it says 132 rf per tick from the west <laughs> uh maybe that's not the way you do this i thought if you okay maybe yeah it's been a while since i've used this i think what we need to do is have another rf consumer attached to the energy bridge and have another connection attached to this i think that i don't know we'll mess around with this a little bit later if power becomes a pretty big issue so anyway we should be able to do this that should connect we should be seeing power here, but we're not. Probably because the power is going directly into this. Well, I'm not seeing anything happen. I can see the charge going away. Oh, now it's starting to get some power in the CESU. Okay, so this is what we wanted to see happening. So this is good. We are, in fact, getting EU power. So I want to see this thing completely fill up. And then I want to see this thing over here get some power... This is, doesn't have power yet, and that's kind of concerning me. And I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't have power, I should say. Uh, let's grab this bauxite. I removed that from the industrial grinder a while ago. I can't remember why. Uh, but anyway. Okay, this does not have power. Wait. Wait. Oh, it did something. It doesn't look like it has power. It doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it did something. And that gave us four small piles of titanium dust. Did that use more than one item? Um, if I put one in there, does it do something again? Or does it need more than one at a time? I'm not sure how this works. We do the uses on the box site. Yeah, one turns into all of this stuff. So is that drawing the power out of this thing? It doesn't appear to be doing anything, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. It didn't look like that was working before. Now this thing shows full on the power. You got me. I don't... Maybe I have to take this stuff out before it processes another one. Maybe I have to have all of those in there before it processes anything. I don't know. <laughs> but it did the one process, so we have enough of this stuff to make a, a titanium dust. Let's check out the uses on this thing. So we need to smelt this in some fashion. So we need a blast furnace. I think this is also a tech reborn machine. Or we could do the arc furnace. We'll probably make the blast furnace. 
I think the blast furnace requires another multi-block structure similar to this one. It's been a while since I've done that, so I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of research and figure this all out. If we look at this. Yeah, now it's not doing anything. So, oh, it's not doing anything because it doesn't have water, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. So it just needs water. That's the only problem we have here. Cool. Well, let me go ahead and process a little bit more of that stuff. I'm probably making it if it's spring until we get some form of water production over there. Uh, let me go ahead and process the rest of that stuff. We'll look at making a industrial blast furnace, was it? I think that's what it was. Just double check one more time. Well, I guess it's just a blast furnace anyway. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at making one of these and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I've been taking some time. I did some prep work. I made a whole bunch of materials so we can make machines and get things going here. Yeah, there's a lot of crafting involved in getting up to where we need to be in this process. Uh, I also went and I created a creative world and I was checking out some things just to make sure we're not going to be derping things up too badly here. But uh, what we need to do is we need to make this industrial blast furnace. This does require a three by three by four multi-block structure similar to what the industrial grinder is. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, what we need to do for this is we have to make like a whole lot of different stuff here. So we need an, two induction furnaces, which is an electric furnace plus an advanced machine casing and a whole lot of copper. In fact, I didn't even check yet. We got copper here. So we should be able to make both of these right now. I should have everything together. If it'll just go ahead and craft for me, that'd be awesome. Why is that not crafting? We had the iron furnace. Oh, you know what? I think I have to turn those into electric furnaces. That's what I need to do. All right, so let's try that again. <laughs> uh, this, oh, I don't have redstone on me. Try again, again. So now it should, should click in there. Why is that not working? Let's take a look. So we need two redstone, the iron furnace, and the electronic circuits. We have that, we have that, and that. I don't know why those weren't shift clicking, but they weren't. Even hotter topic. Nice. Okay, so we got an achievement for that. So now we should be able to do this. Yes, now we can make two induction furnaces. Hyperspeed. Cool. All right, so we got that done. We should have another advanced casing or machine casing on us, which we do. Uh, we need two advanced circuits and then these Krupro nickel heating coils, which has to be made in a rolling machine. This isn't the Railcraft rolling machine. You'll notice it has a little lightning bolt here. Yep, I tried this in creative mode just to make sure it wasn't just the railcraft. It's not. So we need to make ourselves the Tech Reborn rolling machine. Okay, so another machine. So two more advanced circuits. Uh, sticky pistons or regular pistons. It doesn't matter. We need two compressors and a basic machine casing. So uh, we should have everything for this, I do believe, hopefully. <laughs> okay, let's try that and that, and that, and that, and then two of those. There is two compressors. Okay, so we got that done. And basic machine casing, advanced circuits. We should have everything together. Wait, that's, why do I only have one compressor? Did I not just create two of them? Oh, never mind. That was weird. What? Okay, I'm not gonna, whatever. <laughs> it looked like it was there and then it was gone. So what else do we need? The pistons in the corners. There we are. All right, so there is the rolling machine. This machine does not require a multi-block structure. My inventory is such a mess right now. So we have that. Um, we need the Krupro nickel heating coils, which can be made from this Constantin nugget, or I guess the Constantin grit, which is basically nickel and copper grit. These are things I haven't made yet. Uh, there's another item in here. Uh, you can also do the Tech Reborn version, which is nickel and copper in an alloy furnace. Uh, looks like the industrial grinder. Yeah, that's we can't do that. So we need like the alloy for furnace or we have to do the other recipe. And I think the other recipe is actually easier. So if we just do this, just make some of this dust, which is nickel dust and pulverized copper. Yep, I think that's probably going to be the best way to go about that. Just making sure there's no other recipes I'm missing here. Yeah, okay, so um, I guess there was more recipes. So we're going to do this method here. So we need nickel and copper, dust, powder, whatever. Uh, I accidentally made some crushed nickel ore earlier. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, 
pretty much you put Ferris into the Macerator and you get one per Ferris. You don't get double. And I stopped myself before I went through too many of these. But since we already have these made, I bet we can uh, burn that and make that into nickel. And then we can repulverize that into the dust. Let's just make sure that looks right. And then macerate it. It won't let us macerate that. Um. Okay, well, hold on a second. How do we make this nickel dust? I think we need to figure this out real quick. Nickel grit. Pulverized ferrous. A grindstone will work. Or we're going to make a pulverizer. Sag mill is going to work. All right, so the sag mill for the win. Uh, you know what? I bet we can take all of this stuff. This crushed nickel. Do we have the alloy furnace? I think we had the alloy furnace over here. Or, I'm sorry, alloy smelter. So we can do all smelting and furnace alloys only, furnace only. We put that in there. That should smelt up three of those at a time. But we don't have a speed upgrade. But the fact that it's doing three at a time, that is much better in my opinion. So we can put the ferrous right there. That should go ahead and crush it. Cool. All right. So we'll get three more here in just a second. Nice. Get crushed. There's our pulverized ferrous. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get this done then. I guess we'll do four of those. Oh, that's good. I thought this was going to do it three at a time. It only does it one at a time. That's too bad. So now we got to wait for one more of those to go through. We can do our copper. We can combine those, smelt that. We can make our stuff. Uh, let's set down our other machine we just made here, the rolling machine. Um, I think for now, we're probably going to set that down over here just for it, so it's easier access to the power. Uh, rolling machine. Or we can set it down like over here. Now well, let's actually take a look. Where is the best place for this thing to get power? We can just use a wrench to move this thing later. This isn't a machine we're going to need a lot of access to as far as I can tell. So maybe just right here is going to be fine. Okay, so we do the the copper and that together. Oh, that makes two at a time. That's awesome. We can take that. Oop. Guess we'll pulverize a little bit more of that. So let's just double check this recipe. It was this one, this. That gives us one per craft. So we're actually going to need 16. Okay, okay. Well, let me go ahead and get the rest of that made up. This is going to take a minute. I need to get some more nickel going on or some more pulverized ferrous, whatever. Yeah, let me go ahead and get some more stuff done and we'll be right back. All right, and here comes the fourth one. Yeah, unfortunately, you only get one of those rings per craft, so you got to do this four times. So it's kind of expensive, but we now have <laughs> those coils that we need. So we should be able to finally, finally, finally create our industrial blast furnace, which is going to be pretty awesome. Oh, cool. And a shift clicks in there as well. Cool. All right. So what we can do with this is we can actually reuse the same machine casings that we are using over here for our industrial grinder, but it will make the grinder stop working. So let's remove the box site from here. I didn't actually finish processing that stuff yet. So we can put the industrial blast furnace. Do I want to put it here? Actually, let's look underneath. Where's the best spot? Might be over on this side. I'm going to have to make some more copper cables. So yeah, we can just reuse the machine casing. It's going to see this as a proper multi-block structure. And this one still works over here fine. The thing is, we need 1,500 heat, and we don't have that at this current time. So let's get up here on top. Uh, I made two more recipes of the standard machine casing. This actually should be enough for our industrial blast furnace. Yeah, so now it's at 1,600. So that is more than enough for what we need to do with this. Uh, this guy over here is going to say it's a missing multi-block structure. So this no longer recognizes this thing, but that's fine. We're doing this temporarily uh, so we can get all the stuff done. So here's our titanium dust. We need to give it a little bit of power. I don't have any copper wires on me. I think we had some more uh, maybe in the extruder over here. I have some copper on me. All right, there's that. Let's go ahead and extrude out those as well. Do I have rubber? I do. Let's go ahead and rubberize those. Yeah, safety first. All right, so we got these things all rubberized. So we should be able to hook this around over here. So let's see, that would be this block. Okay, this block. So we just need to wrap this over to here. Like so. Okay, I think that should be all we need to do. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like it is gaining power. We have the right amount of heat and it is processing. This is going to take a minute. And you see it right here it says it requires 1500 heat. It takes 180 seconds per piece. 
Oh, you can do it with the tiny piles four at a time. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. Anyway, so we're going to be using uh, this machine a lot in the future where we'll set up its own proper multi-block. We'll probably use the reinforced or the advanced machine casings and not the standard. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to be setting up one of these in the future once we finally get our quarry set up and all the resources coming in. And we won't have to really worry <laughs> about going down to our mines and doing all this stuff like we have been doing so far. But anyway, guys, let me go ahead and wait for that to happen. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, well, our titanium went ahead and smelted up inside our industrial blast furnace. So we have that now. This gets us one step closer to the quarry. This is the whole reason why we've been doing this whole madness is so we can make ourselves a quarry. So the quarry requires a whole bunch of bits and pieces, but it requires this diamond drill. And this is where the sticking point is. It's why we had to make the titanium was so we can make this diamond drill. Yeah, we also need a few advanced circuits and some diamonds. The problem that I'm running into right now is we need five more iron and we are, I'm sorry, five more steel and we are out of steel. I've turned the rest of the stuff I had into refined iron plates. We would only need one more piece, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, we need a better way to make steel. Yeah, we keep running into it. So what I was doing is I was just cooking up some coal into coal coke to put over into our blast furnace to do some more iron, but this is going to take literally forever and I don't have this kind of time to wait. So there is yet another way to make steel and we can do that with an induction smelter. Yeah, we can do that by making refined iron ingot. Yeah, so to make the refined iron ingot, we can put, uh, looks like pulverized iron or regular iron, I think. Yeah, with coal powder, which is EMCable, so we can make this stuff. And iron is EMCable, so this is probably going to be the preferred method for making steel going forward. So we can do this all in the induction smelter. Cool. So the induction smelter requires some invar, and we don't have any. So in order to make invar, we can do like invar blend, which is made by iron, dust, and nickel. Mm-hmm. I think there might be another way to do this, maybe in like the thingy down below our alloy smelter. Let's try this. If we switch this over to alloys only and we put in some ferrous, oh, well, won't put in the ferrous. Okay, so I guess we have to cook up the ferrous first. Let's try putting that in. We'll cook up three of those. I think we can put in a bunch of iron with the ferrous and it'll convert that using the alloy mode. <laughs> anyway, if we can do that, that's going to make things a lot easier. Let's find out if this works. Otherwise, we're going to have to pulverize this and do it through the dust method. Let's do alloys only, iron, and ferrous. Oh, it looks like that is, in fact, going to work. So I think it's three iron and one ferrous that'll equal three invar. Yeah, okay. So this is going to be probably the best method to do this. So we need... Uh, yeah, we need a bunch of invar here. I don't believe any of this has exchange value, so we have to cook this all up by hand. So we're going to need four, eight, ten, and then some reception coil, this, and whatever the machine frame is going to be, just ten gears and all this stuff. Okay, cool. Well, let me go ahead and make up one of these things. Yeah, uh, once we have the induction smelter set up, it's going to make things a lot easier for us to get steel going forward, and it'll just make everything that much better. So let me craft up. One of those, we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I think we should have everything together to finally, finally, finally make our quarry. So we're gonna make this battery. Of course, it won't let me shift click it in. Why would it let me do that? Uh, we need the insulated copper and then these tin item casings over here. There's the RE battery, nice. Okay, so for the next thing, we need an electronic circuit and that steel. We have plenty of this refined iron now, so that is pretty awesome. Uh, there's that and no, it's like a circuit. Wait, what was it? I can't remember. It was electronic circuit and RE battery. Okay, I just had it in there the wrong way. Okay, so there's the drill and we needed like, what was it, three diamonds? Let's take a look. Three diamonds, that and an advanced circuit. So there's that, there's an advanced... There's three of these diamonds and there's our two titanium done. All right, so we got that done. That's the hardest part. We can't shift that. We can't shift click that in, unfortunately. Uh, diamond drill, this, this, this. What was in the top center? Another advanced. Boom. Quarry. Finally. Oh my goodness, guys. 
That takes literally forever in this mod pack to get that done, but we have it done. I am so, so happy about that, guys. So we out of time for today. We're not going to be able to hook it up. Um, it would be nice to get it hooked up right now just so we can have resources coming in for next episode. But, yeah, we don't have the ability to get that done right now. We're out of time for today. So we'll look at uh, maybe doing – I don't know. Is there mining worlds in this? I'm going to have to find out. There is even a mining world. We'll look at setting up the quarry somewhere. We'll look at doing all these things. Uh, we still have a plate energistics that we can get hooked up, and we're probably going to want that for all of our item storage. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff uh, still to come in this series, guys. All right, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.